The flogcast may occasionally contain explicit content that makes it not safe for work or for minors. It also doesn't provide an excuse to use the same words on Bay 13. Normal Bigfooty rules still apply. Starburns is here and I'm joined by the brains behind Hawthorne's new Guernsey penal. So today is the shortest day of the year in terms of sunlight and normally when there's not much sunlight you get angry which is why whenever you see on the news some kid joined ISIS or shot up a school or something it's always some ginger who hasn't left the basement in six months so things could get heated tonight. <laughs> um, I don't know where else to go from there. Jurors don't do anything silly. <laughs> and just there you heard the Flogcast's very own musician. He works for AFL Photos and he's a master pianist, Dane, from North. Yeah, hello. That was a great introduction, by the way. From St Kilda, we have Mr Moral Victory Cookson. Alliteration, always awesome. And finally, we have proud player sponsor of James H from Collingwood Morgan Ashley. Hello. Goo or tears time. I'm going to go first this week. Non-football goo. Cleveland Cavs goo. <gasps> no, no, that's I knew mine. You were go- I, I knew I had to get in first on that. I have goo for Cleveland. Oh. Goo for Cleveland. It's a good story, as Brendan Bolton would say. I love basketball. I don't even love basketball, but it's a good story. And, you know, if anyone's seen the Cleveland doco, it's quite an interesting watch, and you got to appreciate what that is. And it is funny because they did it in the most Cleveland fashion. They nearly fucked it. They nearly lost it, and they had to do it the hardest way possible. And... I don't know, I like a good sports story. I liked Leicester getting up. I like this not as much, but still, it's pretty fucking good. So that's my goo. Morgs, do you want to add to it? Oh, it was epic. It was so epic. I remember sitting last Monday at the Queen's birthday game with, with my brother, and I said to him, he is a Golden State Warriors bandwagoner, and I said to him, you will lose the next three games. And he's like, you've got no fucking idea, blah, blah, blah. Morgs was right. <laughs> Oh, hashtag, Morgs was right. He goes, no one's ever done that before. I'm like, I know, and you will lose the next three games. He's like, yeah, whatever. Well, Corey, I was right. You're an idiot. Cop that. Yeah, <laughs> cop that, Corey. Yeah. Yeah, you bastard. But I'm, I'm sure he's changed bandwagons now, and he's a lifelong Cleveland supporter. Does that mean that he is a Hawthorne supporter of football, if he loves a bandwagon? No. Loves a good bandwagon? No, right? he's only been a Collingwood supporter. Okay. Oh, except for that time where he changed to Geelong. 2007? <laughs> no, it was when he was a kid, and he's, the local team he played for wore Geelong jumpers. Ah, that's fair and enough. Then, then I think mum threatened to stop feeding him, so he changed back. Child abuse is only okay when there's football allegiance on the line, in which case it's encouraged. It's always okay when your kid wants to become a Geelong supporter. <laughs> He wasn't going to give up food, so... Nah. Yeah, no, nah, good story, and I've got nothing else to add. If anyone else has anything to add, did anyone else want to make that their goo this week in bye week? There are a lot of strands to the story, like J.R. Smith, part of the story, who went to jail for killing his friend in a car accident, came back from there, wins a championship. Matthew Dallavadova, who's a Collingwood supporter from Maryborough, didn't play a minute in the last game. Didn't even wave a towel like Paddy Mills, but still won a championship. Lots of different aspects to it. I thought it was great. It was wonderful to see Draymond Green not win, because he's a shit eater. <laughs> I look forward to Della Vadova <laughs> trolling Julian de Stoop. Like, mm-hmm. It's just destined to happen. I don't know how, but it will. They'll find him again. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll find him. It'll, it might be set up, but they'll find him. Oh, and Kyrie Irving getting a ring, being a Melbourneian. That's nice. Yeah, moral Melbourneian. <laughs> 
Moral Melbourne in Kyrie Irving. Like they take the trophy to where they're all from. Yeah, so that does mean it comes to Melbourne as well as Maryborough. That's right. Yeah, Kyrie brings it to Melbourne. Kyrie, oh, yeah, Kyrie should bring it to Melbourne because he was born here in 2012. Like he was weighing up playing for the Boomers. Like he's like almost Australian. He's more Australian than us trying to claim Russell Crowe. Like he was well, born here. <laughs> Susan Neese. Nice. Nice. <laughs> She's immortal, is she? She's a Susan's long line right? ascendant to Farlap, isn't she? Yeah, so does anyone have anything else that's not basketball related? I've got goo. It's still round ball goo, but we'll give goo for Wales and Iceland. Podcast, bloody Why? basketball podcast. Wales didn't oh. beat England. Yeah, but they went ahead of England in the group. Oh. So, yeah, that's pretty funny considering Wales has literally one world-class player. Oh, I'm Welsh. I should care. And you're a Welsher. <laughs> and also, Iceland for doing well and with like, well, 10% of their population or something like that in France. They held Portugal to a draw, didn't they? When Cristiano Ronaldo <laughs> put in an almighty suit afterwards. So yeah, well, bit... just on the Iceland thing, someone pointed out because Ronaldo had a big sook about how Iceland parked a bus. And then someone pointed out the fact that in Iceland, it's so, such a small country that they have a phone app to prevent you from accidentally committing incest when you meet someone because everyone's so closely related. And I've checked this out, and this, this is a brilliant ad that they've got going. They've got an ad campaign, and this slogan for this app is because no one wants to put a baby in his sister. <laughs> a poor English translation, but fucking brilliant. This needs to be passed on to Tasmania and South Australia. They might not take it up, but we should at least try. And Geelong. Maybe maybe we should send it to Geelong. I think Geelong's beyond repair. <laughs> Can't save them. Is that Islenderbock? Yeah, Islendigabock, I think it's I think it's called. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. The the app lets use bump phones before they bump uglies. <laughs> It's a warning alarm if they're closely related. <laughs> oh, I love that. I imagine everyone knows what that alarm sounds like too. Could you just imagine that in public? Are you staying near someone and your fucking alarm goes off? If you're at a club and you meet someone, you pump phones and it just goes, bum, bum. <laughs> Is that what the incest alarm would sound like? Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. Would this alarm take care of sharing showers? Does it, or is it just contact? You can piss on them, but you can't make contact. Would it be a silent alarm? There's it... probably Icelandic people who've gotten so shit based. They've ignored the warning and like, fuck, they're cousins. This is why it exists. Well, yeah, Mickey. they are known for being drunks, like well, pretty much know, like all Scandinavians and Northern I Europeans. I alarm clock. I mean, it can't happen. I guess it's sort of similar when you're drunk. You're not. <laughs> if just ignore if, your if incest you're... alarm. If you're drunk and your cousin's hot enough, you, <laughs> you ignore. You turn the alarm off. <laughs> That's exactly when you use the silent alarm. <laughs> We've taken this to a really, really strange place. Like Iceland? Yeah, like this, this is what I would have expected from Teacher's fucked up Brady Bunch internet family that he's kind of yeah, started. He's not here again as well, so we're, we're, we hope it's well soon. Well soon, Teach. Internet father, husband. <laughs> now that really is incest. See, it's not the last one instead of reverse, but he called me his internet daughter bride. We've gone way off topic, so did you want to come back to Iceland and Wales, Cookie, or have we... Just Iceland have done well, Wales finishing above England, and also a bit of, bit of goo to Payette, who's played pretty well for someone who was virtually unknown 12 months ago. Does Dan or Penal have any football goo? I was going to have soccer goo as well. <laughs> can I go with my soccer goo? <laughs> yes, you may. Yeah. And then Dan can it's... maybe go with Game of Thrones, and then we don't give a fuck about bye week. I've got a huge load of goo for, I hope I'm saying this right, Gabor Karay, who is the Hungarian goalkeeper for their soccer team, and he is the new global men's fashion and style icon because he's in his 40s. He looks like he could be your dad. And he's out there playing, playing really well, mind you, in his fucking sweatpants. And I have to tell you, it, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen on a soccer field. Just watching this guy bound around in his sweatpants. Doesn't give a fuck. He's an absolute baller. And he's my new favourite sportsman. So he's in his 40s. Yeah, he's, he's been around forever. Play, played in the Premier League in the 90s. Now he's, now he's playing, I think, in the, in the local Hungarian league. But... Oh, just a great story. Oh, so he's not in Euros. Is he in Euros? Yeah, he is. Uh, I think they're, do they're doing really well, actually. Okay, so once Euros over, he can come play for North. <laughs> <laughs> 
I would love to see him running around in a north jumper and sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> Morgs has just shared a picture. That is a great pose to go with the sweatpants. It's my new big buddy avatar, that pose. So goalkeepers can wear sweatpants. Is, is this a thing? I'm pretty sure you can wear whatever you want, can't you? I, yeah. I had no idea. No one gives a fuck about the goalkeepers. It's just like... 45 minutes into Iceland and chill. <laughs> that, that's got a whole other angle to it. Dan, you're the last one left. Do you want to continue on the um, range of... Because uh, North lost. No. Yeah, I'll talk about that afterwards. You know how I, I complained last week about buses? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Well, I had to get a bus <laughs> on the way back on Friday night. The bus ride itself was was okay. It was just the fact that I had to wait in the rain at uh, <laughs> Pox Hill Station to get to Ringwood. No fried duck this week? No, no fried duck. No smells. I actually got a seat this time, which is all right. This is the third time I've had to, to catch a bus. I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> I'm kind of beaten by it, really. I mean, I, I, could, I sort of harped on about it last week, but this time I'm just sort of accepting defeat now, and if it happens again, it's like, oh, well, well, well all right. So to anyone who wanted to hear any football discussion in goo or tears, stiff shit, let's go to the games. There was only one game that mattered this week. Come on, let's face it. Yeah, there really only was one game that mattered, and it was Friday night, and it had everything. Where do we want to start on that? Bit of... Well, there was a bit of sniping going around. It was quite funny game to watch. Mm. It was a good it was game. Weird footy. It's a fucking ripper of a game. Like we all wax lyrical about the the Port Dogs game the week before, but I think this one was probably even better. I mean, it ebbed and flowed. Hawthorne got on top late, but North threatened to steal it back. So on on your, on the edge of your seat. They might have if Jamie McMillan didn't take a leaf out of Lindsay Thomas's book and duck his head in the last minute. That was a pretty piss poor stage at a crucial time of the game. And yeah, it was um, widely applauded the fact that the umpire didn't get sucked in. The guy threw his head back, but there was no head co- head high contact. And he just threw the head back looking for the free, and the umpire got it right, thankfully. You would hate to if that was in, say, North's forward line, and it's Lindsay Thomas or some other dirty diving cunt throwing their head back and they actually get the free. Lindsay doesn't get free kicks. He's a ducker. Yeah, but, so, I mean, if you had a game decided on that decision and it had gone the wrong way yes, in North's favour, then it would be horrible. And it, the game probably needs something like that, a game being decided incorrectly on something like that, or a massive head injury to actually change the rules. So hopefully well, it's, hopefully it hopefully happens it's too. a... No, I don't want to know where Morgs was going to go there. Hopefully it's actually a game being decided. Yeah, of course. That's, of course that's I what I was going to say. I thought you were going to hope the Dame Beams to get a head injury. That, no, that or James Sicily. <laughs> um, Speaking of James Sicily, how fucking good is he? I mean, he is the best forward since Ablett Senior. <laughs> that fucking good oh, at the game. God. He's the Rising Star nominee. He'll probably win the Rising Star this year. And I'll tell you, there was a massive rise in my pants on Friday night whenever he touched the ball. Okay, that, I don't know where to begin that with that statement. Best arm? forward since Ablett Senior. One, you'll, you'll get kicked out of the Hawthorne Goose Squad for that, for acknowledging Ablett Senior is a high-quality forward and the best one you know, in the last 20-odd years. That discounts Franklin. And I think Dunstall still played after Ablett Senior. So, but... Even by yeah, the, the, he's not really he's not really the same type of player as, as Dunstall though, which is why you said best forward. Yeah, no, well he's not. Dunstall's we heard the all best shit about forward. Sicily's the best Shield half last, forward. Last year. Yeah, yeah. Where's Liam Shields? Well, he's, he's the best gonna, player gonna, in the AFL according to my friend. He's been pretty average this year, and it's been quietly happening that he's not been that great. He is the best he pressure never, player he in he the was, AFL. Oh, <laughs> Champion data stats confirmed. It's all there. What Cyril's claim to fame is Shields is the best pressure player. He's the best goal kicker in the AFL, Cyril. Oh. It's all there. I made a thread about it. Go read it. <laughs> Stick a goo tag on if you want. It sounds sticky enough to me. Yeah. I think Daniel Wells also played well. Uh, he, he, he was he was shit like he was last week. I thought he was good this week. Really? Well, it was pretty similar to what yeah. he was last week. Uh, no, I let someone get 48 touches on him this week. He wasn't <laughs> tagging <laughs> Dangerfield. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Anyways, if you're a neutral and you've watched Hawthorne play recently, you, and I, when I say recently, I mean over the years, you've probably come to realise what a very good side they are and they're very hard to, to beat. Mm. But if you watched them on Friday night, 
you watched, without any doubt, the most hollow, non-deserving <laughs> victory in modern-day football. Oh, get your hand without off Without a doubt. Hawthorne had you guys, absolutely you guys the no right couldn't back it up with winning skills. that game. No right to win that game at all. I sort of agree. When you watch some games, and without trying to sound biased, you just know that when you lose, you actually lose that game more than the opposition won it. And that couldn't be more true about this game. You got lucky. You, well, you might have won if Eastern really. Wood could kick I, as well as Sicily. That's the only. It's the only difference in the in the game was the accuracy. Every other bad kicking is bad football. Of the though. Game. It's a pretty shitty excuse. Like people blame umpires. North umpires, missed all their shots in the first no one else half. If you miss, North kicked I think seven seven to nine six in the second half. So it was about even. <laughs> North missed all their shots in the first half, where the game was up for grabs in the second half. In the last quarter, they went missing when the heat was on. When you when you get a hold and one, that's lucky. When you Sink the eight ball on a break, that's lucky. When you win the lotto, that's no, lucky. If you sink the eight ball on a break, you lose. That's not lucky. That's still, <laughs> that's bad luck. Well, if you win like the way you did on Friday night, that's on a different this is, scale. This is, just, this is just more fucking classic North loser victim mentality. And I thought Dan was one of the good ones. No, it's, I'm calling it like it is. You got NL very, very lucky. And Al would be absolutely furious. Bad goal kicking is bad football. Well, NL is a closet. Hawthorne's Your analogy NL. actually works, Dan, because North sank the eight ball on the break on Friday night. Hawthorne didn't win. Do you really lose? Because I, I did that like a couple of years ago in a pool hall. I sunk the eight off a break. Yeah, so that's what North did. The analogy fits. You just got it wrong. That, you shouldn't lose if you if you manage to pull that off, though. Those are the rules. You don't. You don't, you don't win a game of football for having more scoring shots, just like yeah, you don't the, win a game the, of pool for not sinking the eight ball no, at I'm the talking, right I'm time. Talking about the game of pool, though. If you, if you sink the eight ball off a break, which is incredibly <laughs> difficult to do, the idea is to, to ultimately sink the eight ball. If you can do that off a break, you should actually win. Well, no, because there's no fucking skill in that. You don't lose if you sink the eight. Okay, so Morgs are saying you don't lose, and no. I'm just saying you do lose. If you sink the eight ball on the break, you don't win. You either spot the eight ball or re-rack. According to who? According to Google. Oh, so it's like a drawn grand final. Uh-huh. Oh. Again. Anyways, it doesn't matter. North should have won. They were the more winners. But they didn't. And you guys got very, very lucky. Very no. lucky. It's not luck. Pure skill, being brilliant at football. <laughs> Sicily, the rising Tough pants man. <laughs> what an inflated <laughs> performance that was. Weedering can have the rising star, but Sicily can have the rising pants <laughs> he's, well, he's got the rising shoulder that he's, gets him he's, those... the, he's the new turtle head of ducking, Sicily. Uh-huh. He, half his goals were free kicks. They were. Well, it, such That's an inflated fact. rising star award nomination that he was. He kicked five goals, you dickhead. How, is, how does he get two and a half goals from free kicks? Okay, he only got two, or well, maybe three. I don't know. It was an inflated performance <laughs> nonetheless, as was Hawthorne's performance. You shouldn't have won. But you somehow did. I don't know why. Maybe the planets were all aligned up at the same time. It was, it was because Lindsay Thomas is a ducker, the umpires told me. And the umpires don't like him. Because three, Lewis, and, Lewis, and Mitchell, because Lewis and Mitchell are still guns, despite being, like, balding, fat bugs. North went them and really didn't make much. Like, Zeeble tried, but he couldn't even hit... Sam Mitchell in the head properly. Even when North go the Hawthorne snipe, they can't do it right. At least when we went, the we went to knuckle last year and we beat him by ten goals. So because yeah, you knocked Goldstein out. Yeah, you took we, out our good players. I'm where awful. Where Zeeble tries to take out Mitchell and he just knocks him over. Well, that just proves they they just can't hit a target <laughs> even when they're going the knuckle. <laughs> they fight like old men. But the fact that Zeeble got off is a disgrace. I mean, using the Tom Hawkins two down to one as a baseline, then Zeeble should have got three weeks. One's a punch and one's kind of running someone. It's a bit different. It's a little bit different. The Hawkins one was pretty yeah, get up, Mitchell. Get and off. that's what we got in the game. He executed a bump on somebody. He didn't hit the head. Simple. Lucky, Penal. Very lucky. This is probably the meltiest I reckon Dan's been since we questioned Swallow's leadership. I'm just calling it like I saw it. <laughs> Hawthorne are never lucky. They only win... Through greatness. Free kick Hawthorne. They're always unlucky. That's why we have the wind against <laughs> us for three quarters every game. <laughs> the, the, the indoor breeze. That's why that we, we have had. Match, matches get rescheduled to our disadvantage. We are never lucky. We're just the best. Well, you weren't lucky when they gave out colours of jumpers. That's the only time you weren't lucky. 
Thank you for proving my point. Never like Even when they could change their jumper and actually put pink on it, they still managed to get that wrong because they kept the fucking brown. What else have we got on that game before we get to the elephant in the room? Hawthorne look old. They as do. As good as they are, but they look old. As I said last week, that and not to be a Jose and all this back to Richmond, but as the Gold Coast win was the one of the worst performances we put in for the year, most disappointing, and one of the Hardwick, you know, death knells, effectively, in my opinion. This was the game where I think it became apparent to everyone that Hawthorne can't win it again. No, fuck off, you're wrong. <laughs> I called Hardwick Ross Lyon light, and now I'm going to call you Jose light, because that was such a shit call. We're winning games on the back of guys like Sicily, Tim O'Brien, like Kate Stewart, free kick, Who? Daniel, wow. You know, we've brought these guys through, and we're turning them into regular best 22 players. We've also debuted, I think, another three players on top of that. And, you know, we're rejuvenating, we're rebuilding, and we're going to win the flag while rebuilding. And it took a really unconvincing North playing shit football for you to fall yeah, in. Geelong did the same, though, but they still went down the ladder, despite bringing in Duncan, yeah. Caddy, you, all those other randoms. You are not beating... Geelong, GWS, or the Colas. It's not happening. Bullshit. It's not happening. You beat North. You got them at the right week. You get lucky once. You don't get lucky twice. And they didn't play well. You won't finish top four. It won't we happen. You never get lucky. Dover, Hawthorne. Dover. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Hey, hey, hey. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> it's over, Penal. It really is. People have said it's over since... Fucking 2014. Round 1, 2014. They yes, said it's time, over. Time, Hawthorne won their flag. They won't win anymore. They've been saying that for two and a half years, and we keep proving them wrong, and we're going to prove them wrong yet again. Brian Lake's gone. I don't want to make light of it, but Ruffy won't be back this year either. That's, time that's waits. true, and that's unfortunate. So it's very good, then, that we've unearthed the supreme talents of Sicily and O'Brien to fill the hole holding the forward line. Hodge is fatter and slower than ever. But in September, the whistle gets put away, so how's Sicily going to get five shots at goal? Oh, also, four umpires at the weekend. That's oh, next to 33% free kick Hawthorne. No, but the one umpire lost, was doing all the... We lost the free North. kick count by, like... 30 or some shit. It was an absolute disgrace, the umpiring this game, and they favoured North, even though they were going the snipe. Lindsay Thomas didn't get a free kick, and they were clearly against North because the umpires told Jeff Walsh or Scott and or whoever look, the fuck I, it was. I've had her up to here with my with this fucking free kick Hawthorne <laughs> shit peddled by Teach and all the Geelong supporters because when I posted my lol North thread on Friday night, the first five posts were from Geelong posters saying... Free kick Hawthorne, yet we lost the free kick out by fucking 25 or something. Nine. And what, just for a bit of perspective, what was the count? What, like, percentages and, you know... It was tw in 29 to 20. Okay, so that's that's not even 50% more free oh, kicks. Oh, poor plug yeah. of penal. Listen, <laughs> plug of as penal. just in Kilda post, I have going to snipe and they still won the free kick count. It was an absolute disgrace. Cookie's missed moral victory, St Kilda supported, which puts him... He's best qualified to make this judgment. What is the verdict? I thought the umpiring was fairly even. I didn't wow. really just think that much. Best sitting answer from you, Cookson. Yeah. I might have had a few, though, so... I'm, 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 I'm really disappointed in you right now, Cookie. What do you expect me to say? They were riding... Well, I never took you for a goo chugger. Well, there was a few docking incidents with some Hawthorne players, but... Like that North fucking Melbourne Lindsay North. Thomas cunt. Oh, oh that, <laughs> that Sicily guy. Oh, yeah. what a superstar he is. But it's not worth getting Malti over because North's goal kicking costs them in the end. And he's the sissy and he's fucking stupid fuck duck crap. As a part-time North supporter, it upsets part Oh, fucking hell. Did you wear your scarf and badge on fucking Friday scarf, night? Scarf, badge and hat. I wore a hat too. And you called your brother out for being a fucking it Golden a State week and we didn't wagon. play. You're jumping on North this because Big Jam's rooted your club. I'm not on the sack Big Jam bandwagon. You're not. Well, you should be. He's a fucking joke. I think we've said almost everything on that game. Lucky. Very lucky. Go buy yourself a lotto ticket like those port supports penal. <laughs> Unlike you, I'm not some fucking povo cunt. I'm not broke. I don't need to win the fucking lotto. Well, on that note, North's wallets are a lot lighter right now. <laughs> <laughs>
forget lighter. We, we don't have the money to pay this bill. We would not need a 24-month plan to pay this bill. Thanks a lot, North. Now we have to well, pay for this. 50k to North is like Carlton's million dollars. That's how crippling this is to North. They're going to have to rig a lot of raffles to make this money Look, back. Their players already robbed the cabbie. Their membership department has scammed Sue's. <laughs> Sue's of all people. Oh, she's going to have to buy a lot of Northies. What are they going to do next? to make up this 50k. She actually bought a, uh, one of those um, pledge engraved things at the, at the at the facility as well. It, it costs like 400 bucks a piece and she keeps buying a membership, merchandise. The players could probably help. They could empty their piggy bank accounts and take it to a coin machine at a bank or something and I don't know. Stop paying money for Mrs. Boomer's food. That's step one. Step two, have some more rigged raffles. I've got an idea. Maybe they could auction off Drowning Brad Scott. 50k, right? <laughs> Who would want to pay well, us here, though? Do people hate well, Brad Scott would, like they would do? It would start hate? at 50k. Yeah. Might end at about 500. Yeah, and, and if he stays under. But who would pay money to see that, though? He's not really hated, though, is he? Well, okay, fine. Lindsay Thomas. Then. What about Powell? Oh, I know Powell. who would. The West Coast board. The West Coast board. Would... <laughs> Don't worry about well, the fucking wings badge. Then, then Brad's they... got badge. They'll but, pay for it. Yeah, but then they won't have a, 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 a themed avatar thing that they do every year. Imagine how many avatars they could make out of the Brad Scott going down the slide. Or drowning. Mm-hmm. Even better. Good story. <laughs> you got to admit, though, it was fucking ridiculous. What kind of fuck? Like, I know we're talking about Brad Scott here, but what kind of fucking idiot walks into a presser without even having talked to the person who heard... He was probably a bit hot-tempered over Hawthorne's lucky victory <laughs> in which... <laughs> well, that just um, proves he's an idiot because we weren't lucky. Why don't you stop and actually ask the player who supposedly heard this? It's like what exactly what you said before you go in, try and put the fucking umpires on trial by media. Instead of even raising it through the proper channels, you go out and fucking scream into a microphone that Lindsay Thomas was robbed right in front of you. No, even raising it through the proper channels would have been stupid because there was one incident and it's not like there's some kind of grand conspiracy where the umpires and stuff are all conspiring <laughs> to against Lindsay Thomas. It, please, it's live please action. Stop. Please stop. Play. I found something funnier. There's a crowdfunding campaign to pay the fine. <laughs> oh, no. The North got the tins out again. It's already raised $800. Oh, <laughs> come on. Those poor fools. They're wasting their money. Where's, <laughs> can, so, can you link this to does me? Does it say who's <laughs> donated and what? I want to see if Suze has chipped in yet. Oh, imagine if Sue's offered, if I donate like $100 to, to get back on Big Footy, would you, would you unblock me? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't start the page, but I'm going to find it. Oh, should we chip in? I, I, feel, I feel like we should. If you raise it in the proper channels, no one has to know that, you know, Brad got it wrong if you go and speak to him quietly. But he goes in the presser half-cocked and fucking melts. And then, it's like Jamie McMillan finally got his comeuppance because he got, you know, for the duck. He's a guy, he's a poor kind who gets blamed. He's probably not even the one who heard it, but hey, you, you're, the, you're the one who actually ducked. You, we'll blame you. No, but when the umpires are watching the game unfold in front of them, they have a split second to make a, re- make a call, and of course the player's reputation is going to impact it because you see that there might be incidental high contact, so you're like... Is that a free or not? Yeah. And I've umpired before Same. when I like that. That was how I earned my money when I was sixteen and didn't have a so job did yet. I. So I umpired footy on the weekends. I've umpired. I know what it's like. You go, this player's a ducker. I'm not going to pay. Of course you do that because it's so marginal, so incidental. But that's perfectly reasonable. Any kind of exaggerates makes you think he didn't actually have anything happen to him because he's able to exaggerate. You so know you're what I mean? saying that umpires it's, are not professional a, in their duties. No, because these people try it's and con you. It's a split second decision, and it's perfectly reasonable what the umpires were doing. It's not like they're gathering around. They all get the video replay out and just have a giant jerk-off session together and say, oh, Lindsay Thomas, he's a ducker. We're not going to pay him that free kick. No, it's happening right in front of you. I think that's a second decision. And of course you're going to be influenced by the player's reputation. And so you should be. But I'm amazed North got fined for this. I'm not. I have a theory that this actually happened, that... The umpires actually did say what they were saying. <laughs> no, but hear me out. But even if that did come to light, 
Brad still would have been fined regardless because the AFL don't like when players or coaches or officials bash umpires or their integrity. So they, they can fine him for telling the truth. Come on. No, but so, it's, so, it's, it's still so umpire stubborn. bashing. Wait. It's umpire bashing, but the umpire the umpire get hauled over the coals. Stubborn, why did you get paid for E instead of Dan? Dan, I thought you didn't post <laughs> on the North Board. Well, you just said a second ago that umpires and even yourself have these sort of... Yes, but you um, no one pre- in their right mind's actually going to say he doesn't get it because he's a ducker. Well, they could. Y- you That's don't like say it. You just... It. It's a doubt thing. But Brad, Brad Scott insinuated that it was premeditated, which it absolutely was not. It's a split second thing where the player's reputation influences the 50 50 call. It's not a premeditated thing when it puts doubt in the mind, and if there's doubt in the mind, you don't pay the free kick. This is what I'm saying. If someone's got that rep, it puts the doubt in the mind, you don't pay the free kick. And when Lindsay Thomas does it, the doubt is in the mind. And that's why the last free kick wasn't paid, because he threw his head back like he'd been shot. And when you do that, there's doubt that there was even anything significant. He's given up the game to play for that. And, it's, you know, if you're able to do that, there's doubt that what happened to you was even that bad. It's a doubt thing, Dan. It's not a, it's not a vindictive thing. And that's what Brad's tried to make it. It's a boy who cried wolf thing. Yep. Yeah, agreed. I'm really surprised North got fined because what are they meant to do? Fucking hold him back when he goes into a press and go, hey, Brad, you know, th- that umpiring thing that we told you, don't talk about it. It's just like, how's, <laughs> how's that North's fault? I don't know. I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised that North got hit harder than Brad over this. I really am. Well, the AFL's explanation for that is that the club has some sort of responsibility to advise him not to say those things because it, it's they who supposedly knew about this before Brad did. I mean, he was told only moments before his press conference. Yeah, by like, by like one person who didn't hear it right. But I mean, the coach is like really the mouthpiece of the club and that's understandable that North got fined because of that. I feel sorry for him, but I think it's hilarious of the crowdfunding. So if it was true, <laughs> you still don't you don't think that Brad or the club would have been fined? Because I no, think they would have. No, because North wouldn't have dropped it. What's this fucking crazy conspiracy theory shit? It's not true. <laughs> Move on. What if George Bush did 9-11? It's, it's no point beyond, discussing it. It didn't it's not, happen. It's not beyond the bounds of possibility that the AFL are trying to cover their tracks and protect the umpires in this regard. It's a fucking mic up. It would have come out one way or another. Holy shit, North were wearing their 1996 jumper and that, that kangaroo tail looked like an Illuminati pyramid. The AFL are the only ones that have access to the microphones that the umpires are wearing. No one else can listen to what they're saying. The broadcasters hear it. You reckon the broadcasters are just going to... They don't hear hey, Hang on, I've, I've cracked the code, right? I've cracked the code. 1 plus 9 plus 9 plus 6, 25, 5 minus 2 is 3. The <laughs> Illuminati has three sides. It was a conspiracy from the start, guys. We need the X-Files music back, but no, like, the networks have it. That's how they pick up j swearing at the umpire on the weekend, which was pretty funny. But, you know, considering how Channel 7 will talk up some of the worst fucking stories, like, you know, they turned the Dustin Marn thing into the shit fest that it was, and it turns out she probably lied about that too. And Tim Watson is saying that it was said, you know, if it was a story, someone would have made it a story. And North would stand by it, but McMillan and everyone else has backed away. Yeah, if it was a story, it would be a story, because Coach is an idiot and makes a bad bad decision in press conference to accuse umpires is much less of a story than there being actual fucking bias or corruption. Occam's razor. This is like St Kilda board stuff, but like even worse. Actually, now that we're talking about Brad melting in a presser, how about the roof being open beforehand when it rained? I'm amazed that went missed by Brad. Obviously, the umpires just put the red mist above his eyes, but bit of water on the ground pre-match. I'm amazed Brad let that go. Did that happen on Friday night? It did. They left the roof open before the game and they forgot to close it for the rain game. I had no idea about that. You would be annoyed even if you were just a f- fan sitting in the stadium. If I'm not sure the gates were open yet. Oh, there was water everywhere. In the stands, all the floor was wet. They had to have people mopping. P- that's it- piss poor if that's the case. Yeah, well, well they clearly was- did it on purpose <laughs> just to affect the chances of winning the game. I it's just don't more, have- more proof that Hawthorne are lucky, right, guys? <laughs> Do we have anything more on this one game that mattered? North. I would just like you to know that the- it's up to $965 now. <laughs> Hey, hey, we're doing our bit. 160 bucks since we started. Yeah, NL was listening live and probably chipped that in. I did donate five dollars just so I could write page <laughs> 13 and lol north on it. Oh my god! <laughs> You're kidding. Hey, Mox, remember to get a receipt. Claim that as charity. I have. I've got a receipt. It's been emailed to me, but so it does look like 
13 donated five dollars. <laughs> I really hope this reaches its target because the <laughs> North have to, <laughs> the North have to what? North have to give the money back? What? <laughs> No, no, Otherwise, I'm calling you Esther Borchich. I want my five dollars back. It's obvious. It's making more progress than the fucking flight plan too. Over at Tulla. <laughs> Speaking of the flight plan, they weren't too supportive out at Essendon this week. Uh, did anyone catch the crowd? It's like under 15k. 14,000, the lowest crowd they've had since they were at Windy Hill. <laughs> Apparently it was the Giants' fault, though, and the time slot. Because Essendon, the only team to ever play 440 on a Sunday in winter, you know, at Etihad. Mm. I've got to point out, there's still something on this game, though. Toby and Green, 20 and free watch. Mm, he's got a he few could, this year. He's, like, averaging, what I just said last week, still getting 20 disposals and, like, two and a bit goals. Plus tackling as well. He could, like, 20 and free, like, legitimately for a season, he's, which he's, is he, fair and, and he snipes like Lee Full. Yeah. Um, just just got a punch face the as line? well. Oh, did anyone see him did get stuck into Goddard after time. that one he dribbled through? Well, that was... I think Goddard actually whacked him, didn't he? That was the only thing Goddard's ever done that I've been like, yeah, well done, Goddard, you did good. Because, fuck me, Toby Green, what a punchable fucking cunt. See, I don't <laughs> like Toby Green, but I like laughing at Goddard even more still. And it was funny to no, chase that dribble. For, for me, it's a reverse. For me, it's like, uh, you know you're a dickhead when I want to take Goddard's side over you. I disagree. I loved every minute of that. Just Goddard chasing the ball down, didn't get there. So Toby Green came and went, ah, oh, suck shit. Your movie does not end well. You know, this is how it ends for you. Getting told off by fucking Toby Green. But the Giants, it took them a while to shake him. And Essendon supporters, apparently they clapped him off at half time again. Standing <laughs> over. I don't know what else to say about that. Well, game. Essendon's uh, best player was a bloke named Orazio Fantasia. And just looking at that name, you think his parents must have been fucking Icelandic brothers and sisters <laughs> or some shit. Because they have made some terrible parenting decisions with that name. But uh, GWS, they actually sniped him. Like, they went the full on front on Snipe, even worse than Zeebel on Mitchell, and concussed him, and he had to go off. And I think it's probably because of that that GWS actually won, because Essendon were a man down, their best player down. The Giants yeah. actually forgot to play football. They're like, mm. you're a football team. Why are they sniping? They could have put them to the sword by, like, 100 points. Yeah, they, want, they, they, wanted, they wanted to be smart asses. They all wanted to be Toby Green fucking kicking cows Well, this in was the head. a classic case of the team turns up thinking the game's already won. Yeah. It was just that little bit of arrogance. Easy win coming up. And yeah, and it's very it hard out. to do that, even with an Essendon that are as shit as they are now. It's very hard to do that in the AFL now. Yeah, Ever we, since we the expansion with... club sort of came of age. Even against Brisbane, you still have to sort of turn up. We saw that with, I think, Geelong against Essendon, North against Essendon, that second half. Even us mm. against Brisbane. Kind of tight yeah. contest. Swans against Brisbane. Us against the Suns. Yeah, and I think... There might be one occasion, like GWS, are, we know that they're a really good side. There might be an occasion where Essendon gets a better of a sort of mid-table team, like a, a Port or, God, that would be funny, fucking <laughs> Coach Killers Hall of Fame, Gold Coast their first year, <laughs> GWS their first year, and now Essendon with 12 players suspended. I reckon, you know, Essendon, if they play again, I think they already played in, in Adelaide. If they play in Melbourne, there might be a case of a team just rocking up and thinking they've got the game already Mel won. Melbourne losing Essendon to Essendon get... twice this year would be very Melbourne-esque. Being the only team to lose to Essendon as well. There's something very Melbourne about that. That would undo all of the progress <laughs> they've made to the Roos yes. and just set them straight back into the middle of the Neil era. <laughs> Poor Roos, well done. Three years, but it did nothing. <laughs> Nothing else in Essendon Giants? Nope. The, the, the dogs weren't good enough. The package didn't deliver. The cats rode the one-man danger field train. Continues to carry them. Anything else out of that game? The, the dogs kicking was worse than North's, but they still weren't really ever in the hunt. Uh, ball the movement average. was shippable. It was like bottom eight style ball movement and possession. And Geelong's pressure was good, but it was amateurish. Are you saying it was... So, saying it, it, was, was it was very unsexy. It was Mrs. Boomer, ball movement. So, Dan, given that uh, Western Bulldogs... Oh, oh, the long were lucky where they paid. The long were lucky. Yeah, lucky. They only won by 57 points. Yeah, but the dogs kicked 513, and of course, as as Dan said earlier, that doesn't matter. It's because the dogs were unlucky and Geelong were, were lucky. I alluded to statistical stats as well, which we... Statistical stats. 
as opposed to non We beat what on every... Here we go. Dogs, dogs had more inside 50s. Dogs had more contested possessions. Dogs had more free kicks, just like North. They should have won. Geelong were lucky. Brisbane no, had 60 more disposals than West Coast, and they got beaten by 60 points. Oh, clearly, West Coast were lucky. <laughs> So, so every team that has an inaccurate day and loses was unlucky. Based on That's what you were saying earlier, right? Yeah, but I wasn't just pointing to set shot kicking penal. Penal's getting awfully defensive this week. I think deep down he realises what we said about Hawthorne being he knows they He knows they're cooked. He knows it. It's gone. They're gone He's, and he knows it. Yeah. Oh, goose who's going to challenge us this year? No one. Uh, Who's going to challenge, challenge you? No one's going to challenge you because you you won't even be there at the pointy end. You won't be top. You three. might not even make the eight. <laughs> We're ten and three. Oh yeah, ten and three. How are we not going to make the eight from there? Ten wins doesn't get you into the final. Carlton are coming. Don't you know this? <laughs> Port Adelaide are going to take your spot. Maybe maybe Richmond. Oh my god. <laughs> You guys are actually stupider than Erin Riley's blog and yeah. saying something. I haven't hey, said let's anything. Not, let's not, let's not say things we can't take back. Yeah, take that back. Yeah. Yeah. You apologise right you now. Apologise to me now. Apologise. Apologise. Well, I'm not the fucking, I'm not the fucking pianist amongst us. <laughs> you're, you're just a penis. Just North Update, $1,090. <laughs> oh, no, you, this guy, whoever has created this, is just going to go to the pub later tonight with that 1K and be laughing. It's probably James no, no, Brayshaw sure created it. He doesn't it. get the money till they hit 50. It's a, it's a crowdfunder. I'll Say they do get to 50. Wanna... Then it's another but... North scam, no, isn't it? It was, <laughs> it's not run by it was, the pub. It was created by Esther Borkic, and yeah. a quick Google search shows that this guy is a guy, a guy or a girl. I can't tell from the LinkedIn photo. It honestly looks like it could be both or neither or whatever. But they appear to work for the Australian Council of Trade Unions. So I'm just going to say, fucking typical <laughs> unions. At it again. Make but more great also, again. I've also <laughs> their Facebook page and their picture is of George Costanza. Wait, are we, <laughs> wait, are we sure this tradie, this ACT you got, he's, he's not a fake tradie or anything, is he? Hashtag. <laughs> That's the guy in the ad. <laughs> Oh. No, I think he's he's not a fake trainee, he's a fake North supporter. <laughs> Hashtag fake North supporter. Hashtag morgues. <laughs> I think else? that we should do our big guys and we should read out some donations. So, like the Good Friday appeal, Peter Economopoulos <laughs> has donated $100. Thank you, Peter. Oh, God. Oh. God. <laughs> So if if, he, if this individual who has set this up reaches the 50k mark, he can do whatever he wants with the funds. Is well, that is that right? Well, Legally, he can do whatever he wants. I don't know about the legalities. It might be fraud if he keeps. Hang it. on, this has made the news. It's made the news already. It's on Adelaide now. The Adelaide advertisers <laughs> running with it. Oh, it's front page of the Herald Sun website. <laughs> uh, Cassandra Van S drop ten dollars. Thank you, Cassandra. <laughs> and she's left a message. Hearts to hearts. Hands to hands, hashtag shin bone spirit. Okay, Morgs, can we get some of these a bit later? Keep the donations coming as we continue on. Guys, give, give that they may grow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The, um, the good North Melbourne this is, appeal. This is sad. Like, I, I weep for the future. This is this might be this, we've got. Have there been any donations from Hamish Reap? No, they haven't. I don't think you can donate via PayPal. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else on the dogs versus the cats? The dogs were very disappointing, and Stringer was a goal hungry cunt. He's skiing this year over shit teams, and he's not delivering against the good ones. This is probably uh, Hawkins' best game for the year, so credit where it's due. The fat cunt has obviously been well invigorated by the rest. Oh, I um, saw him chasing inside the forward bacon. 50. I couldn't believe it. He chased it. for the first time ever. Oh, I know. Like, that's what happens when you have a week off. Like, Geelong should just rest him every second game, because otherwise he can't move. They probably told him no pies, because he got suspended. No pies this week, and he was he was angry. <laughs> He's stuck next week. <laughs> They've got the ball. Let's move on. <laughs> Fucking Port Adelaide. How... Hinkley is a shit coach. That midfield is full pretenders. How do you lose to Frio? And the funniest thing is that I'm enjoying is that everyone's saying Ross Lyons rebuild's working. The best player on the ground was Michael Barlow. That's and Pavlich. Yeah, and Pavlich, yeah. And Pavlich played a good game. They're, That's not the rebuild best, working. That's their best the four players are Mundy, over 30, old and not going to be there in a few years. Barlow, old and gone. Pavlich, old and gone. 
Neil, he'll be at Adelaide Gone. next year or somewhere. St Kilda, maybe. Maybe he'll go to Port Richmond Adelaide maybe. and just put up shitty numbers too. But, but yeah, um, literally their best four players won't be there in 2018. So get your hopes up, Frio fans, but the smart people in football know you're going to be in the bottom just four for a long out. time. They're going to win all these it's games all good and now for they're them. going to get a worse they, and worse draft pick as they go. They're they have Ross Lyon for now. the next 10 years. It's all good. Well, this is the thing. This is Ross's rebuild is successful coach. right now, apparently. Apparently. That rebuild that involves players like Dawson and Subin and mm, Zach like Clark. Literally five five token youths, which most clubs do have at least two or three, unless you're North. Even Hawthorne are playing more youth than Frio. Like, that's the fucking watermark. <laughs> it's not a rebuild. They keep playing the same old spuds every week. And they're still the best players. Well, those, those same old spuds <laughs> took care of Port quite nicely. <laughs> I also noticed contested Bucking Beast Charlie oh. Dixon a grand total of three. Wow, that's Is it three contested or just three? Two. Well, that's a high number for him, considering no, no, Cal Hardy has to catch well, a ball. Well, considering how the, shit Port um, Adelaide were, that's probably not bad. I think the Klangman medal thread will get a work over this week because Brad Klang Ebert, eight Klangers, Klang Wingard, five Klangers, and Jasper Pittard, another five, five Klangers no. as well. Sorry, EIMM. Someone needs to defend his virtue. In defense of virtue. <laughs> Thanks, thanks for the claim, Mike Jasper. Team. Yeah, no, it's, it's a, that's a great thread, and uh, you should all get around it. Nothing else on the Puffers versus Freo? I've Puff. got some Freo supporters. It's not a bat pluggers. Fred is not a backfire. You whiny cunts. Just shut the fuck up. No, it's it's vintage. It's a double backfire. It's backfired so well. It's positive. No, no, it's just it's backfired on Plugger and it's backfired on Frio and really the neutrals yeah. win with that thread. It's Free like the lose, show Plugger loses. Thread. It's just vintage. Yes, it's they can't give it anything else. Backfire. It transcends the other prefixes. It's just vintage because there's melts the in there too. Though. There's been plenty of melts along the way. It's had everything. Um, the only thing that would potentially make it a backfire is if Rossline eventually wins a premiership. But we all know that's not going to happen. And really, if he does, the journey's still better than just simply a backfire. It, that thread deserves more. And credit to Plugger, not that he meant it to be this way, but that thread just keeps giving regardless of the results. There's more chance of Brad Scott fucking coming out in a press conference and saying, the umpires did a great job, <laughs> Lindsay Thomas ducked and he shouldn't have got that free kick, than there is of Ross Lyon winning a premiership ever. There's more chance of Penal admitting that Hawthorne are cooked than that. But lastly, on the, pu- lastly really on the puffers, really going to silly in October. Two two games off eighth spot. It's going to be hard for them to catch Hawthorne now. So it's probably going to have to be someone else. Let's move on. The Bryans. I mentioned it before. It's sixty more disposals than West Coast and lost by sixty points. Now it seems the media has actually cottoned on to the fact that their midfield don't actually do anything. Well, no. Let's face it. Rockcliffe and the rest of their fucking spud players are very lucky that they play for Brisbane and no one in the media gives a shit. If Rock Rockcliffe was the captain of Richmond. Like, Trent Cochin got criticised. Some of it was fair, some of it was unfair. If Rockcliffe was the captain of Brisbane and he played the way he did, week in, week out, the media would have hounded him to an assisted suicide by now. <laughs> well, but no one gives a shit about Brisbane. Basically, you so are, he gets the fuss. That Cochin comparison's pretty fucking good because Cochin played one rockcliffe S game in round two and he stat padded and he was crap and he was my tears that week because he didn't affect the game at all. But he's been pretty good since then. Whereas Rockcliffe's been doing that for, well, as long as Hadouken was paying attention to him, basically. <laughs> so a year and a half. And no one's paying well, attention. Gary Ablett got 53 touches and everyone went, he was pretty fucking shit in that game against Collingwood because he's Gary Ablett. But no one cares about Rockcliffe. You're right. Nothing else on the Bryans. Scott Lysette. What a fucking idiot. Nick Exes Nat- win. Woo. <laughs> the Carlton didn't play. Nick Natanui <laughs> gets injured and Scott Lysette goes, you know what? This is the week. I'm not going to give a fuck. So John Giles gets to be the number one Ruckman. And West Coast still fucking well, bury him. The only thing I took out of this game was that Kennedy only kicked five goals, which is kind of sort of under average for bottom four teams for him. And Lewis Jetta still doesn't give a fuck either. Did anyone see his piss week attempt to tackle? No. Uh, no, yeah, we all saw it. I, I saw enough of that in the grand final a couple of years ago. <laughs> Let's move on. Last game, Colas rolled Melbourne. Melbourne disappointing, considering they probably were, you know, it was wet. Colas did play pretty well in the wet, but they, you know, they had a chance. This was a good chance for him to get no tippet. Max Gorn, dominant form. Melbourne getting a bit of confidence. 
but well they were in it up to about three quarter time um, and then it just kind of probably just before yeah the cold was kind the of th- the away. third quarter where they didn't take opportunities and sydney took i think the two they had really took it out from a three goal margin to i think it was a four and a half at three quarter time which is a lot in the wet but yeah just not yeah, and then it was something like five, five to zero in the last yeah. so buddy kicked his 750th goal so could reach a thousand in a few years yeah, he might be the last one to get there. He, well, he could well, reach 1,000 in a few years. He's still got seven years to go on his contract, doesn't he? Or eight, six years to go. Serious question. Who will get to 1,000 goals first? Lance Franklin or Don't James say, Sicily? I knew you were going to say James Sicily. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't even deserve a response. No, I don't even say anything. I agree. Sicily is so far in front. Let's move on to the talking points because there's, I, I can't think of too much out of the Colas versus Melbourne game. Speaking of the Colas and the wet, we got Drown Gate, and I think we all have fairly strong opinions on where this leads. Oh, I think we can all agree, though, that fuck Aaron Riley. Yes. Caro is not a liked member of the media, along with a lot of other people, but Caro writes about football political stories. Aaron Riley seems to only write we pieces about football. Aaron Riley, typical jumped up fucking hippie Sydney cunt yes. talking about our game. Fuck off, have your expensive latte and bleed our game and our opinions down in football. And, sh- and she's a part of this fucking professionally offended class of social justice warriors that are fucking scour the media, scour the internet for things to get offended about just so they can try and get their five minutes of yeah. fame. Well done, Aaron. You got your five minutes. Now fuck off back to obscurity, you fucking hag. They've really milked the shit out of this story, haven't they? Well, they've milked it like a cow. That's the thing. Right, real story, Aaron. Like, I don't want to trivialise it because in hindsight, there was a story of sorts here because there was a malicious sort of thing going on. It's not as bad as everyone but, said, but it's certainly not nothing. But it's was not it a little bit shit. inappropriate? Yes, maybe it was, but it's because Eddie can't stand Caro, Brayshaw can't stand Caro. It's a fucking personal thing between the two. Let them sort it out. Out. Maybe it didn't have to get brought up in the media like the way Eddie brought it up. And he didn't need to call her the Black Widow or whatever the fuck else that's it was. That's basically yeah. the core of it. They don't like her, and that's why they said what they said. They don't like her that... because she's unlikable. They don't not like her because she's a woman. Erin, please, I hope you are listening. Not every ill thought out joke at a woman's expense is an act of sexism, you fucking idiotic bitch. Seriously, it was a shit joke at the expense of a divisive media personality. It was not a joke about her because she's a woman. It wasn't an attack on her because she has a vagina. It was an attack on her because she's a cunt. That is a <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> find and it so disappointing that people like you, whose sole job is to contribute social commentary, have been given a podium and an audience for your boring, rehashed, woe is me rhetoric. Stop portraying women as victims of disadvantage in circumstances that are completely irrelevant to the sex of the people involved. And it's people like that that don't want equality when they can get the oh. opportunity to get some moral grandstanding out of it. Well, like Morg said, it's you take the joke portraying like a women are victims. Exactly. Because if, if Eddie had said this about Barrett or Hachi or Jose, then <laughs> no one would have said anything. But they get the opportunity to say, turn it into a sexist issue. I'd happily drown Jose. <laughs> You know His what? eyebrows soak up all the water. Caro doesn't need anyone to be offended on her behalf. Like, she's a strong woman. She does not need a lynch mob of football illiterate females creating an ocean out of an ice bath. If Morg says something like, oh, Hawthorne shit, they're not going to win the flag, and I say something like, well, today would be a really good day for Morgs to, like, trip and fall onto a parking meter or something and kill herself, <laughs> would you take that as sexist? No, I'd say that was really nasty because I'm very likely to do so because I'm very uncle. <laughs> Coordinate it. Exactly. The thing about it is, Caro, of all people, the thing she was most offended by was actually the way they said it, not the fact that they suggested that she would get dunked under because, you know, on her radio station, they joke about that. They said it pretty much effortlessly, like it was all, it wasn't like staged. It's it's just the edge, and I guess in that sense, you don't get to make the joke the way they make it when you're not friends with that person. No, that's exactly right. Like, I can say whatever I want about my mum because she's my mum, but no one else can. It's a familiarity thing, that's all. And we can tell Jose to fuck off because he's one of us. No, because he should fuck off. Deep down, I like Jose because he's a centipede and good on him. I like stepping (laughs) on bugs. Are they like hairy bugs? In that case, Eddie shouldn't have been pushing that barrow. If he stopped it, if he said the little bit, Caro should go down the slide and I'd pay money to see her go down the slide, especially if she didn't come up. If that's the joke and if that's the extent of it, 
then there's no problem here. Yeah. But it's because of everything else. He made an okay joke, and then he took it too far. And he which he shouldn't have done, but there's no need for this fucking colossal backlash against him. I can't believe this, but you know what Eddie needed in that moment? Eddie needed a Luke Darcy to say, I don't think so. He, he, say that again. And this is coming back to the King Kong thing, which was a really stupid fucking thing to say, and Luke Darcy tried to backtrack him by saying, I don't think so, Ed. There was no one here to say, I don't think so, because he happened to be surrounded by James Brayshaw and Danny Frawley, who wouldn't share half a brain between the pair of them, and Damien Barrett. Well, they were happy to chip in because sack. she's gone after them as individuals and the clubs that they represent. I know, but they're, they're both idiots as well. Like I said, it's a personal thing, and so they were kind of happy to gang up with Eddie on that. But I think Messenger said something which was like, James Brayshaw would be the type of kid who at school would just go along with whatever the head jock says because it would let him stay in the cool club. I think that's pretty fair. You know, exactly right. Because when we get to the point when someone goes, why is this fucking amateur cricket flog hanging around? Then he's going to get kicked out. So, oh, yeah, all right, Ed, let's make jokes. Hey, I worked for Brad McNamara. Nobody noticed that he's still here. The, the biggest fucking dickhead in this whole saga has been Robbo. <laughs> he tried to turn it into a boys club thing. Robbo had a moment that I can only describe as a fucking Billy Madison moment where you know how the guy says, what you just said is the most insanely idiotic thing I have ever heard. This is what Robbo said. And it is literally the stupidest thing I've ever heard, not just from within football, but anywhere. Robbo said, fucking, he was very critical of the AFL for not punishing Eddie Maguire. And he said, AFL, you should have done something. Dylan McLaughlin releasing a statement is not enough because words don't mean anything. Only actions matter. Well, if words don't fucking mean anything, why is this whole shit about Eddie? <laughs> <laughs> My little drums. I think I'm deaf. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, okay, I can find a silver lining. Sorry this. about that. I just get really what silver lining. I'm now permanently dead. Yeah. Oh, there, there is a silver lining. There is a silver lining because of this saga. We got Hello? to see man with no name get smacked down anyone. by Clementine Ford. Which, if anyone's familiar with her, that would have cut him so deep. He wouldn't have known what to do. So it's like on Twitter, I assume? He tried to defend Wayne Carey and she gave him a smackdown. And for someone like Man With No Name, that's oh. glorious, I think. But, it's so beautiful um, seeing people like Man With No Name get cut down by the heroes. Indeed. Well, his whole life is a fucking massive abortion because people like that, he probably did gender studies in, in university and he did that because he thought it would get him easy pussy because he never gets any... <laughs> Oh, fuck. Um, the gloves are off the penal. This whole issue is just fucking bullshit to me. Like it's so it's so hyped up over nothing. And to the seven people who deleted me on Facebook after I went on a rant, you won't be fucking missed. I was gonna point out it's... to all my uni cunts who are coming in with your little shit who don't know shit about football. Shut the fuck up about football. You know nothing. And just suck a dick. Yes, that is the <laughs> feminist thing to do. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm like, you're not going to tell people to suck a dick or anything. No, I'm I'm conflicted on this because I don't actually. I'm not, I'm not completely angry about the story, but at the same time, could you get I angry? Like, no, well, about Hardwick maybe. Is there a way to somehow blame him for this? Did anyone read Reader's article in the Herald Sun regarding this topic? No, because Reader's the Erin Riley of the right. No, but you're wrong. In this regard, she's on Eddie's side on this. I'll just I'll read the first paragraph. That's what I mean. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. If Erin Riley's left, Reader's right. That's my point. There is no unbiased, centrist, moderate discussion of this issue. All you've got is on one side, the social justice warriors, Erin Riley, and then you've got the Reader Panahi, Andrew Bolt of, of the, on the other side. No, there's a centrist argument here. It's RoboStar. Burns, but unfortunately, Penal got too angry, so <laughs> it's too hysterical. There was a story here, it's been blown out of proportion. It was a story, now it's a saga, because fucking everyone ran with it. Because, and we mentioned this last week, fucking bye week is slow. Not to mention the AFL runs off 24-hour news cycle, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and there's so much footy journalists who get in because they know someone... They probably suck someone's cock. They went to school with this guy. This is... Why is Penal not in? <laughs> I'll have you um, know, what... I have never sucked anyone's dick. Let's... Well, I have, Did... but um, I don't before... think that's relevant. 
I may have had an egg up my ass, but that's different. Before we move on from this, does anyone want to say anything about Richmond boycotting Triple M? Who, actually, there is a reasonable point here that Triple M are the only ones who haven't said a fucking word on this. Are they Should they be? I don't know. If It's almost as though they don't think anything at all. Well, right the now. people concerning this issue have apologised, so I think it's a... Eddie's apology was about as sincere as Johnny Depp's. Except he didn't go well, home and beat his well, wife afterwards. Eddie did nothing wrong. Oh Why should he apologise? I'm offended that he fucking apologised and James Brayshaw apologised. Mm. I think Eddie needs to calm down because ever since he got fatter, he's got fatter over the last few years, but he hasn't started buying smaller suits. He's still buying the same size suits before, and I reckon the fucking suits are cutting off the oxygen to his brain. Like, how many times in the first six weeks of the season do we have dumb idea from fucking Eddie? Eddie's in denial about his weight and his size of his sh- suits. Who cares? He's in denial about his shit decision to put Buckley as coach. Let him in denial. <laughs> I thought you were anti I don't think we should sack him, but I didn't think we should hire him either. Do you think it's time for Eddie to go, Morgs, as president? Uh, um, yes, yes, yes. Get Alyssa Camplin and she can be the president. I'd almost compare him to Kenneth, because Kenneth did some great things for Hawthorne, but it was he was term limited. It was time for him to go, get some new bloke in. His name was literally new bloke and new ideas. <laughs> and that's what I think should happen with Eddie. I think it's time for him maybe this year or next to kind of move on, get someone else in, because no one wants to see some fucking president have a dynasty at a club. Maybe at Geelong, some president can be fucking at Geelong for 40 years because that's the only dynasty they're ever going to fucking have. But all the rest of us... We need new ideas. You are so fucked, man. It's honestly time for us to turn over the presidency. And I've said it for years that the next president should be Alyssa Camplin, who is on our board. But if we were to do that now, it would look like a reaction to Eddie's comments and the backlash to get a female. So So end of this year or end of next year, Eddie and Bucks will go together (laughs) because they're irrevocably tied together by the decisions they've made. And it would be like Thelma and Louise are going to drive off the cliff together and hopefully our club doesn't go with it that's a good note to move on from nothing more on the richmond boycott no no one cares i wish someone anyone. would boycott fucking channel seven <laughs> he just like basil goes up to you for an interview <laughs> fuck off basil you're a cunt <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. There is only one other talking point of note. Uh, the women's league's been announced. Not a moment too soon for Collingwood, it seems. St Kilda got a bit melty, which surprises me because if any club didn't deserve a women's team at St Kilda, just look at the fucking history there. I'm sorry, Cookie, but it's true. But they weren't the only club who was a bit miffed to miss out. Uh, Geelong missed out and they are a bit upset. Well, if you have a look, like the, the women of Geelong are at the age range that these people are trying to target. They're all single mothers and they've got too many kids to put push around to be worried about playing footy on the weekend. <laughs> Right. And that's why if you want to try and so much success 18, for the ladies down there. <laughs> the 18 to 23 age bracket, like, they're all busy, like, giving lap dances and shit on the weekends to try and pay for their kids. They, they can't be playing footy. And it would be odd to commentate on someone called, like, oh, here's Desire Rave the Bull to Sunshine to whatever stripper names there are. Well, there was Not a enough. survey put out during the week which Australian city produces the most porn stars and 85% of them, unsurprisingly, come from Geelong. (laughs) The other 15 are from Perth, unsurprisingly. Speaking of Perth, the other funny thing about the women's league licences is that Fremantle got one instead of West Coast. Now, there would be something hilarious here if Frio won a women's flag before they won a men's. And maybe the, maybe the key to that is the Nat 5 sex change. If they make that happen, they'll rock it into favouritism. I think, I think it all I depends did... on how long the men's team keeps Ross Lyon on as coach. It's kind of funny that also <laughs> Brisbane have a team as well when they probably have no money Bris- to pay for it. Well, yeah, Brisbane can't even handle one team. You're going to give them a second one? Isn't there like a shitload like in, of women playing footy in Queen in like Townsville or something like that? That's what I've read. Well, that's not Brisbane. Yeah, but just put the team up there. Don't put it in Brisbane. Yeah, I think I think Queensland overall has the market for it, but I'm not sure the way they're going about it makes sense from a financial perspective. They don't. They just that they they might have all the players in the world, but they clearly don't have a club that can do it. And apparently, the reason why we didn't put in for the women's we we didn't even I think make a proposal was because the Dingley expansion and the cost that would incur to our bottom line and so there's no financial room to move on the women's league or something. I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere. 
<laughs> Someone no, else. I, I, I thought I thought it was because forty eight percent of your fan base do not like women. I thought it was because he said bottom line. <laughs> Essendon couldn't have a team because you know they already have enough problems with fertility in the men. Um, they don't want to have any other problems with the women there, but. Yeah, I don't know what else we can say. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Apparently, they've got, the AFL have reached a bit. They were told six teams was enough. They've gone with eight. Oh, yeah. the Melbourne star player also said, no, nope, fuck you, I'm playing for Melbourne. I'm not going in the draft. Oh, I know. Yeah. I, doesn't she think she's a fucking superstar? Daisy, seriously, call your jets. You've been drinking your own bath water. She's the best Daisy going around, though, at the moment, isn't she? <laughs> oh, well, that's not fucking hard. She, she is employed um, by Melbourne, Melbourne Football Club, so she does but work for It's appar- Apparently, it's not going to be a draft draft. They're going to let them take some franchise players, and obviously she knows think, where she's I think staying. you have to. And look, that Queensland the girl staying that, at the so Browns. That, that's fair this enough, at least, for the, at least for the girls that have been with Melbourne or the Dogs for the entire journey. Just let them kind of yeah, stick I, around. And I don't have a problem with that needed. at all. I think it would be terrible. Yeah, but she should, she should be... just let it play out because it's not going to play out any other way. Just shut up about it. Don't go making a fucking mockery of the draft and going, hey, I'm not going to play if I have to play for someone else. You're not bigger than the league, bitch. Just on the number. Don't do a James A. Don't do a Chad Wingard. And uh, I'm liking that thread. Should Port Power have picked Toby Green ahead of Chad Wingard? (laughs) That's actually kind of swung around because for a um, couple of years that looked like an absolute backfire but now it's almost Fox Dramas material um, yeah just on the on the number of teams I noticed Jared who is like one of the few voices of reason within the AFL media he said because the AFL wanted to do 10 but then Jared said yeah. no don't do that 10's too many even 8 might be stretching it a bit but I think I think 8's a good compromise because I think if you went 6 I think 8's a good compromise I think if you went 6 but... too many teams would miss out maybe Carlton or Collingwood Something like that, and then you get a whole bunch of melts. But probably eight, both. Eight's a good number. Then again, maybe Brisbane wouldn't have got a team, and then they wouldn't have to worry about fucking up two clubs at once. <laughs> yeah, uh, or fucking th- two sides th- at once. I think four, four, four Victoria did. clubs plus one in each state is a good I number. Agree. I still think it should have been franchises, then, though. Just make it a bit easier. I, I, I agree. Actually, I think it should have been franchises in Victoria. Yeah, but elsewhere, I think you could have gone with the existing teams because there's no way they will ever get to 18 women's teams with a talent pool and like it's barely a sustainable model in the men's competition to have 18 teams with the amount we have in Melbourne and they're so, going to have like mother son yeah. rules and all that and that's yes, what about but... grandmother son <laughs> oh, I don't know I wouldn't mind seeing Carey's daughter yeah. play football They'd well, really grow well the thing about the, the North AFL team they don't know who the fucking father is <laughs> It's only fair that they get the women's team to balance that out. It is Steve or Perry from the two. I agree with Cookie on the franchise thing. I think it's they shouldn't have gone that way. Yeah, but on the universe, it's kind of like shit that the women's footballs because they have dreams of probably playing for Collingwood and all that. So it's fucking shit place, really. Fuck the dreams. You I'm can, okay with it. Let's you, let it, let's let it you, play out you're for a couple be... of years, and if we need to reassess, then we reassess in five years or whatever. How's that fun thing going, by the way? Oh yeah, Morg's getting an update. Yeah, sure, uh, guys. I'd like I'd like you to know that um, 60 people have contributed, and we are up to a total of 1225 dollars oh, you people are stupid um, and, <laughs> and i'll give a few shout outs to lol north who donated five dollars thank you lol north <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh to paul cousins who's probably been fucking his born blue and white will die blue and white go boys <laughs> And my favourite one, Heidi Swallow, who sure has been. You can find us, refer, refer to Thomas as a ducker, call Brad Scott a liar and call our beloved NMFC pretenders, but the shin bonus spirit is alive and well. We love our players, love our club and support Brad Scott 100%. The AFL can take our money, but they can't take our passion. Love for our club and shin bonus spirit, go Kangas. Sorry, she spent all that time writing that and she only did it five fucking dollars. <laughs> Heidi Swallow. Off. Maybe she's poor because you know, they what? don't pay you child support. They don't pay you the baby bonus if the father is your cousin. Well, <laughs> she needs you know, an Icelandic for that. Here, every dollar counts. So to the next one, Gabrielle Pipe, who's probably smoked a few. Fifty dollars, <laughs> thank you, Gabrielle. Let's go to the questions. I just wants to know since we're on North, what would North buy with fifty thousand dollars if their coach wasn't such a sook? I'd like to go to Northern Lights. 
reply was pretty funny. What was it? They buy a pair of balls because they currently don't said, have any. No, he said they'd buy Western Bulldogs. Uh, Let's say they could probably get a Mazda to raffle, uh, catering to Mrs. Boomer, anti-aging cream, like anti wrinkle No, they wouldn't what? buy anything because they don't own anything <laughs> they rent. Well, they were about to raise 50000 from uh, fucking... Esther and this GoFundMe page. They should bribe Metlink so that the trains are running when North play right then. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> Let's go to one eyed Sane wants to know we've mentioned bye weeks already. He wants to know how we feel about them and what we prefer, whether we want three games of six split round or no break, fuck the AFL PA. I still prefer the three games of six rounds. I just wish the media took the foot off the pedal a bit when this happened. I kinda like the split round, the reasoning being the less weeks that are actually affected, the better. So Two weeks as opposed to three, where you've this kind of media cycle of less AFL talk no and more breaks. drama. <laughs> well, okay, that's, that's no. an answer. That's an answer. Then, as the third option, no breaks. I, I mean, think yeah, no breaks. They get a big enough break as it is during the off season. Yeah. They get that extra we break should... because of North. Yeah, we should have a thirty-four round season. Each oh. place each other twice. No more unfair or skewing result. Cough north, cough. You would never have won a flag if it was a 34-round season. You guys would have been cooked. Why? Because you're old and gone list. Yeah, because we were so finish, old and gone in 2008, You didn't right? finish on top the year before, and those two teams would have beaten you home for in a 34-round season. And you'd certainly not finishing top this year. No, the only reason Sydney finished oh top in 2014 gosh. is because of their easy draw, which the 34-round season would have fixed. We would have finished top. We would have won the flag regardless. Fucking. They got to play GWS twice when GWS was shit. Someone's, someone's watching over your club. You just <laughs> seem to get lucky a lot. <laughs> We're never lucky. <laughs> We're not a lucky, a lucky club. <laughs> Cookie, you had one question, and we'll go. Th- we'll answer this real quick. All right, if you had one AFL person to drown, who would it be and why? Basil Zemplis. Erin Riley is not an AFL person, so I'm not going to answer her. I'm going to answer James Hurd. He would dirty the, the water with all that methane bloody tanning shit that he's got on his skin. Hey, we're drowning people in the water. I don't think it matters that they, the water gets tainted. I want the fat cunt who's corrupted the AFL media, Hutchie. Around that little fat fuck. Well, I, I'm going to vote for Brad Scott just to, <laughs> because the melts on the north board would be fucking hilarious. So that fifty thousand uh, dollar fine turns into an eighty thousand dollar fine. Yes, it does because Brad can't pay it. Yes, you're right. No, that's okay because this this fund is going to raise eighty thousand. That's what they're trying to do. Eighty thousand to pay for Brad and the. Oh, the club. I thought it was fifty. Sorry. Yeah, no, Car- no, no. Car- no carry on with the, with the Brad Scott drowning. So they're barely at one and a half percent. Well, we've, it's only been six hours and we've got 62 donations. <laughs> That's the entire Here North support base. Help pay North Melbourne's AFL fine. Except for Dan. Why haven't you donated, Dan? You don't know that Dan, I Dan. Were the, you low North? I'm ticking off the so, name. What yeah. I don't see so, is Dan. So, Morgs, which one of them was Northern Lights? Well, him and I donated together the $5 from the Bay. Two fifty each. That's real generous of you. So that's well, that's that's how much value you put into our club. A, a that's a sort of bus dollar fifty each. each. It is. That's, Jen, I've got three. I wore three pieces. He's got of three badges. So you're willing to, two. to wear merchandise that you paid for, but you can only put in two fifty <laughs> for this donation. Help North Melbourne survive yes. plan. Help North Melbourne. You've <laughs> put in nothing. Eighty thousand dollars is going to send North to the wall. Help North survive. <laughs> well, the funny thing is. That's probably oh. accurate. All right, I think that's all been answered. So let's go to this week on the bay. Sorry, Morgs, did you drown someone? Did you drown someone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I thought, yet. Yeah, I'd say I would... Oh, Chris Judd. Why? Why Chris Judd? Oh, yeah. did you not watch Footy Classified last night? He's talking no. about Brad Scott and he's like, there's a time to be vanilla and then there's a time to not be vanilla. I can't wait until Chris finds his time to not be fucking vanilla. <laughs> Wasn't that when he's sticking his fingers and eyes and shit? Oh, pressure point, pressure point. This week on the bay is very easy. This week, I think we have a easy nomination on both. <laughs> not the only thing that was easy. I want to start with thread of the week. I think we found a thread of the year contender this week. I agree. That thread, it's official. 
Mitchell, Liam Shields and Cyril Rioli are the best players in the league. Front runner for thread of the year. No, the fucking clickbait thread have been fantastic. Benoit again, not much more to say. I love a good creative thread where people can build on it and that one hopefully doesn't go away and it keeps going all year. I like. The, if I like you try and reach around on this week, I'm going to drown you and Cookie. I like the analysis of Western Bulldogs go back to back first round finals exits in 2016. Was that yours? No, it was Jasney. It was very clever. And we're right. supported by stats of Jasney and David King who have punched the numbers <laughs> together. <laughs> that is a great thread. I agree. It's almost as good as the Liam Shields thread. Remember to flog Shadamas this thread in September, please, mods. <laughs> I'm going to go for a good self talk because they're always funny, but Mofra's thread about Western Bulldogs contributing to White Ribbon Week. I thought that was very funny. Mm. Good self troll. Aaron Riley does not like that thread, though. Dan, anything? Yeah, Benoit's. Let's make Chirf uh, some better clickbait. Uh, 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 it's a good thread. Let's go to Vlog of the Week, and this one is even easier. Oh. Yes. So who wants to introduce this one? I don't like to give oxygen to those who I have on Ignore, but this required me to show Ignore content, and it was well worth it. So I think the flog of the week is very clearly the village idiot. <laughs> if anyone does not know this story, it's a post in the casual chat thread. I don't think we should spoil it for you. You no, it's no. highly Just go, go, and, have go and have a read. It's on page three thousand one hundred twenty-nine. Three one two nine. There you go. It needs to be seen to be believed, but really, if it was anything, this was his Tiger Boys moment. This was his can't change a tire moment. That's what this was. He just separated himself from run of the mill floggy tool to fucking dead set dead shit. Yeah, go and have a look. Yeah, the dead shit police is after him now. Does anyone want to offer a dishonourable mention? I have about thirty. I wrote a fucking <laughs> list. Checking it twice. <laughs> You're in Tell us, well, Aaron. I'll give you the top five names on the list, which are Kangaroos Forever. Oh, no. <laughs> STP18. Dr. Giro? Gero? I don't know. Dr. Whoever the fuck. Fucking Jiska and Malefus. There you go. You're all idiots. You're on my shit list. Well-deserved nominations. Okay. I am somewhat surprised you guys didn't nominate me. I thought I would have got well, the, uh, the the nomination that Teach did yeah. a couple of years ago. Now that, now that, now it up that you mentioned like Penal, you deserve a dishonourable mention for... I don't even know where to begin with. Like, honestly, you're just lucky the Village Idiot exists, I think, because Teach Cop's a bad rap who was nowhere near this bad. But, but I'm never lucky! <laughs> See, you can't even win it. That's how unlucky you are. Oh, like, you actually squealed. You squealed in our ears, Penal. Yeah, <laughs> twice, I think. Just on honourable mentions, actually, and I'm not sure whether this is Vlog of the Week or Thread of the Week, but Roby's really ramped up the troll factor in the last week. Check it out. Oh, I've read that. It's a brilliant uh, work. <laughs> yeah, once again, just ch- the power rankings have been a little bit slow for a few weeks since Essendon dropped off top, but yeah, he... He's inundated he's, with things. He's, He's having a bit of fun, so check that out. Next week's games, beginning with Thursday night, Crows versus North at the Crowville. This should be a really good game. No, it won't. Adelaide by 20 goals. <laughs> I think North will be unlucky again. Well, they should be without Zeeble for this game, but North are <laughs> always lucky with the MRP. I think that um, Adelaide might just get over the line in another close encounter with uh, Josh the Goose Jenkins kicking four from just, just, five metres out. Um, sorry, has everyone tipped? Or Dan's, Dan and Cookie? No, I've got to go for Adelaide. <laughs> North Melbourne, okay. quietly tossed. Yeah. I think I said the Crows, I can't remember, but I think they win. And just one other tip, by the first bounce of this game, what will the fund be at? I think it'll be at $7,600 by then. 5222 I think it'll meet the target, 80000 or whatever. I mean, the North supporters don't actually have the money to pay for it, but they'll pitch in regardless because they think that Collingwood and Hawthorne supporters are going to bail them out as usual like we always do to their fucking shit tin pot club. See? And, and once again, I have propped 6, them up 000. by contributing. Yeah, that Kanye <laughs> badge really, that went a long way. And Sean Higgins. It'll be at 10 grand like, by LeBounce. We're at 1290 We always hit the 1300 Cody Ballard, $20. Please keep spreading this across North Melbourne pages. This will make a fantastic statement. Not really. Well, it's making a very big statement that the people who donate, Morgs accepted, of course, are fucking idiots. Well, Dan's already, Dan's basically already said that. I think he's more embarrassed by the North supporters than we are by you right now. 
options. Yeah. And that's pretty. That's a lot. Well, I'm I'll, mainly it's, I'm I'll, skeptical I'll, because I think this whole fund is just going to go to some guy's bank account. It's just going to go to the pub up <laughs> or his local RSL and put it through the poker machine. What are you talking about, Starburns? I'm like Eddie McGuire. I've done nothing wrong. I'm a martyr. Speaking of Eddie McGuire, Collingwood versus Frio at the MCG. I still believe it's a false. Frio form line, Collingwood will win. False form that got him a win. I tipped him last week. You did? You were the only one, I think. I think I was. Go me. You tipping him again? No. I'm going to go Collingwood just. I think they've, it, they've slowly turned it around a little bit, I think. It's a TMC. <laughs> we had a bye. <laughs> they beat the bye. <laughs> They're back on track. <laughs> only turned it around because you haven't seen us for a week. That's all. <laughs> um, well, I tell you what, Buckley's in trouble if they lose this game. Right I mean, on, on the, so on the form line, get, line I have to go for Fremantle. I reckon the Dockers will make it Four. Well, they can make it four because fourth one won't be making it four. I'm going to go with Collingwood. Richmond uh, versus the Bryans. I think we will lose the possession count, but we'll win by about nine goals still. Yeah, Tigers easy. Brisbane are terrible home, and they're even worse on the road. <laughs> <laughs> Brisbane are terrible everywhere. Richmond to win, and unnamed Brisbane forward to kick five. How many oh, is Shaka 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 going to kick? Shaky, Shaky, Shaky. It's Charter, Shaky. Frenchie. Charter. Well, it doesn't matter. He won't be playing for Brisbane next year. <laughs> I've already made that threat. <laughs> do you do that every the, time uh, they draft a player in the first round? I don't. I do that every top <laughs> Brisbane draft pick now. They, they're going. <laughs> I don't see any possible eventuality in which Richmond lose this game. Like, they would have no, to fucking... not lose this game, really. They would when have people to have say this about Richmond, to we They would have the to game. have 22 that players is, get is, a bowl up for them to when lose. When people say this sort of thing about Richmond, we lose. That's your eventuality. We... Yeah, but it's Brisbane, though. No. But it's Brisbane, though. It's not like it's Gold Coast from a couple of years what? ago. It's with the John Giants Michael taking Hunt. Essendon lightly. This team is so bad. Richmond on a bad day. Brisbane are worse than Essendon. I believe so too but I doubt it's going to happen I mean Brisbane would need a Hawthorne like miracle <laughs> like they got on Friday to, to get up well maybe Brisbane will get lucky because we all know Hawthorne don't get lucky Brisbane stole all our fucking luck and actually Dan you've convinced me Brisbane will win because they'll get really lucky it's a very Hardwick thing to lose this Mark's too stupid to understand Hardwick so he'll win the game Giants first Carlton at Spotless I don't think the Giants will be taking them as lightly as they took Essendon so I think they'll win this it's at Spotless Carlton are going to get fucking smacked. Can Ed Carlton beat the Giants at Spotless when no one else could, though? That'd be bizarre, yeah. but this season has had a lot of bizarre things. Carlton would need to be very lucky. <laughs> Giants in a close one. I didn't tip the last game. Why don't you care? You're a woman and we're all sexist pigs. <laughs> Aaron Riley told me. Does this mean you have to drown me? Guys, I can't yeah, swim yeah. well. Fuck. I'm tipping Richmond and tipping DWS. See, it doesn't only happen to you, Dan. Well, that's only happened to Morgs once. It happens to me all the time. Oh, who? We forgot Morgs once. That's a big regular I put up with it. Oh, do you? You didn't really. You, you threw your toilet out of the cot and went silent, cunt. Fucking did everyone pick the Giants, Carlton? Yeah. I don't know. I forgot if I tipped or not. Did you I to tip Carlton out? will win because they'll be lucky. <laughs> St Kilda versus Geelong. Ah, uh, Geelong. Geelong. Geelong have taken teams a lot worse than not that seriously, and they're a one-man side. So I'm going to go St Kilda in an upset. I'm with Cookie on this one. I think Geelong are a little bit sore. They'll be ready for the bye. They'll be many already on the bye, and St Kilda, they'll catch them at the right time. They'll be lucky, and they'll win. Geelong! Hawks versus the Suns. Final game. Hawthorne. This one's probably the easiest one. Hawthorne. They won't even need luck, Hawthorne. No, no, no luck. No, they won't. They won't need luck for this they could be they could be unlucky this week and that's no. still uncomfortably. Zero luck required for this game. If, if Gold Coast had all the luck in the world, yeah, they might lose a game by ten goals. So Hawthorne by hundred. Gold Coast <laughs> don't have a fairy godmother looking after them. They only have to look at their injury list for the last two years. Hawthorne. The most important thing about this game, it's in Tasmania. Which the means a uh, good friend of the Flogcast in Jasney will be able to get down to the game and watch Liam Shields and Cyril Rioli, the best players in the game, tear it up. So that means we've won our past, I think, 17 games in Tassie by an average of 50 points or so. And I think that trend will continue with a, a solid, you know, 80 point win or so. And just to kick 12 goals and make me rise more. I don't think you could rise any higher at the moment. You're you're in, you're a, you're a fucking space cadet at the moment. That's how high you are. All right. So this was the Flogcast for round 14. Starburns joined by Cookson. We're up all night to get lucky. We're up all night to get lucky. We're up all night to get lucky. Dane. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to make a comment. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Penal. Never are we ever fucking lucky in this game. 
<laughs> and morgues. Just a quick update before we go, guys. We have reached the thirteen hundred dollar mark. <laughs> Oh, well done. 13. 13. Big shout out to Fiona Wallage, who stupidly donated twice. Thank you, Fiona. <laughs> you idiot. And I also want to give a quick shout out to one of the first donators, who was Tracy Green. Five dollars. Loyal WA supporter since 1977. You filthy fucking bandwagoner. <laughs> Thanks for listening, and if you're as lucky as Hawthorne, we'll see you next week. Give that knowledge, my bro.